Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. And we'll take a look at uh, what's new in Creo uh, Parametric 5.0. Uh, so just quickly, the, um, the webinar agenda. So we'll look, um, we'll, we'll look at a few things that's new in Creo um, 5.0. Uh, there's really not, um, there's so much that we can't cover everything in, 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 a, in, an, in an hour. So um, we'll start and I'll, well, I'll, I picked a few things and we'll work through that. So um, I'll, I'll be doing a quick introduction of boundary systems and then we'll go through some slides and then I'll do um, a, a demo as well um, with in Creo. Okay, so just a little bit about myself. So my name is Pierre Fenter. Um, I'm a boundary systems technical specialist and I've been using Creo for about eight years now and um, working more on the manufacturing side of things, um, but you need to use the basics in Creo as well. So this is just some of the logos of the customers uh, we serve. Um, so I think the highlight in this one um, is just the capabilities that we have. So we specialize in, in product life cycle management, data management, care design and consulting, uh, simulation work and product development. So those are the major um, uh, capabilities we, um, we use and help these customers. So some of our major accreditations we have. So I think the important ones here as well, the Winchell Certified Implementers. Uh, we're also a PTC service, um, preferred service provider, and also cert certified training for PTC products. And then just uh, another slide on the solutions we offer. Um, I think PTC is the main one, but we're also doing solid thinking, head rage and ZWCAD. Okay, so then we can start with the, with the Creo um, stuff and things that's new. So I think the first one that I want to highlight here is the mini toolbar that's new in Creo 5.0. So depending on what you, what you are busy with, if you make a certain selection, you'll see a little mini bar pop up and that's going to give you access to the most common um, features that you might use. So if, you, um, in, um, if you're working with geometrical tolerances or model based definition, um, it's going to give you um, certain commands that you'll use um, when you're busy with that function. If you're busy with surfacing, it's going to give you certain commands um, that you'll use often in surfacing. So really a great tool. You can also customize that. You can add icons in there, um, features and things like that. So you can go crazy with that. And also a nice touch is the new drag handles. Um, so they've changed them a, a little bit in Creo 5.0. Um, that's just um, visually, it's a lot better. It's a lot easier to see. Um, the functionality is pretty much the same. You still drag it and it will snap to certain references and things like that. Um, I think it's just a lot better on the eye um, and, and making your life a little bit easier. Then on the show and hide stuff, so um, part of the um, part of the mini toolbar or at the um, at the top of your your graphics window, um, there's new uh, new show and hide functionality where you can uh, um, make a selection and then you um, can select show only this or show all except or unhide all. So just a just a, a nice touch to, to make your larger type assemblies or um, complica complicated parts a lot easier to view. Um, also, the model tree search they've geared that up a little bit. Um, in the in previous versions, you had to use the asterisk and then you type in a word and then you actually have to search and then it will come up with this. Um, in the, the new search functionality, as you type in the word. Um, it will start filtering through your model tree and it will show you um, as you as you type uh, like the like the most common search tools this. Okay, so then a few of the part modeling enhancements. Um, I like the, 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 the rounds and chamfers in draft. So I'm coming from a um, tool and die background. So normally when you get a part from 
from designers. They didn't add draft features um, or things like that, or they don't add it correctly. So in previous versions, you have to go and suppress those um, those drafts or the, the rounds and chamfers first, then you add the draft or you change it and then you resume it. And then there's normally a failure here and there. Um, with this enhancement, you, um, you can go and you can add those, those drafts. Also, uh, a new feature is the volume helical sweep. So a, a great tool um, or addition to the already um, powerful sweep tools within Creo. So I'll show you a little bit of that um, during the demo. Um, the mirror feature, so I added that in there. So the mirror feature has a preview now. In previous vision, uh, versions, you didn't see that. Um, you had to click OK first, and then it will actually do it. Um, now you have a preview. And now in assembly mode, it did give you a, a preview, but this is in part mode. And also sketch, um, sketch regions, also a um, great new feature. Um, so I've used this a few times when you import DXF files or D DWG files. Um, and then you have to create the extrudes and things like that. So now Creo can pick up those those regions, and you can um, you can extrude them as you will as you need them. So I'll show a little bit of that in the demo as well. So then on the on on the drawing enhancements, um, I think there's there's a great one um, that's really I think it's um, it's by default on now. But with the large assemblies, the HLR, the, um, the multi-threading option. So I think it's available in previous versions as well, but you have to activate it. It is, it is set now in Creo 5. And then also the, the workflow for the radial dimensions, they changed that a little bit. So I just want to highlight that. Um, I'm not going to show it, but um, the, the, depending on where you you finish your your radial dimensions. That's going to give you a certain leaded line. So um, just play around a little bit with that. See 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 the the, um, the different methods and the results. And then they also improve the undo and the redo. So I know in previous versions that um, in some in some cases you can only undo up until a certain um, step. They've changed that. It's a lot better now. It's a lot more consistent, um, and I've, I, I use that a lot. Then they made some changes in freestyle. So um, I think the line command improvements is is really great. So in in this example, we've got a style feature um, that we've created. So and then we've gone into into freestyle and we snap the freestyle features to, to other features within Creo. So, so there, there's a lot more control and a lot more options um, on, on those references. So I'll be using an um, edges and we will play with different um, line types. And also a great new thing is the surfacing in, in box mode. So what box mode will basically do is it will give you like like a wireframe. So guys, that's not working in surfaces a lot. Um, that's great to 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 view your your box mode or your wireframe thing. So it's just making it a lot easier to make changes and things like that. So I've got an example of that, and we'll work through that, and um, you'll notice the difference and how much easier it is if you're not working with surfaces all the time. Okay, and then uh, my contact details. So if you have any questions um, after the webinar, you can drop me a mail. Um, I'll, I'll get back to you. If you've got a sales question, that's the, the sales email address. You can give them a shout. Um, CC me as well if, you, um, if, you, if you've got a question, so I can just follow up and make sure you, you get the information required. Okay, so let's jump into Creo and we'll work through a few few parts. So the first one that we'll be looking at is the new um, the new volume helical sweep. 
So it is under the sweep feature. Uh, you will see volume helical sweep. And it works exactly the same way as the, uh, as the normal helical sweep. Um, the only difference is um, that, you, that you'll use a volume, obviously. Um, but the, the, the core functionality is exactly the same. So the first thing that we need to do is we, we need to draw our profile. So I'm going to define that. I'm going to use the front plane. And I'm going to say sketch. So I'm just going to do a straight profile for now. Just a straight line. And then let's give it some dimensions so we know what we're working with. 15, and this is in millimeters. And the next thing we need to select our axis of revolution. So keep an eye on if you if you use new features, remember Creo will prompt you at the bottom in the message window what you need to do. So if, if you get lost or you don't know what to do next, just have a PK at the bottom. And we'll select the, the data max. And then if we go to section. We can create a section from scratch. So I'm just going to do a fairly basic rectangular shape. And then we can go and add a little bit if we need to. So let's make that 13.5. Let's make that two millimeters. And let's get it a little bit closer. Let's say three millimeters, two, something like that. So this is the cross section of the volume that will be um, swept along our profile. So I can finish that and you can see it created that. Yeah, so you can still change the pitch if you need to. So let's make that 20. Okay, so. That's the volume one. So let's just go through the icons here at the top. So the first one is show the, um, the orientation. So there's the there's the helical, the actual sweep. And then you can also show 3D object, which is the, the volume. And then you can also drag this. So you can take this and you can position it any place on this helical sweep, and you and you can move it around and see how that cut was created. Let's zoom in a little bit there for you so you can see. Okay, so you can move that and you can see exactly what's going on with that volume where it made the cut. Then you can also show it as unattached. And that's going to show you the whole volume, so how that sweep was created. You can see where it stopped and everything like that. Okay, so really some, some nice visual things that you can do and you can see exactly what was going on. So let's quickly make a change or let's finish it first. Let me show you how quickly you can add. So let's say you had to add rounds in here, for instance. Um, with, without the, um, the volume sweep, um, you would use a normal helical sweep. Um, it's not always giving you the results that you want. Um, so let's, let's end a definition of this and let's, let's start tweaking it a little bit. So let's first go and we change our section. Okay, cancel, wrong button, need to edit it. And I'm just going to add some fillets here at the bottom. And I'm just going to make them 0.5. And I'm going to finish that. Oh, just get that nicely in the screen. Okay, so fill it's added. And let's go one step further. 
let's change the angle of our of our volume a little bit. So under the adjustment tab, you can go and you can say, well, I want to turn that on the Z on the X axis 35 degrees. You can see how that changed and how that changed the actual shape. Let's put it back to zero so you can see the change. Okay, so you can twist that um, without building surfaces and um, projecting curves and um, things like that. Um, really nice. You can also rotate in Z. So let's do a three degree. So you can see it just turned a little bit. So depending on the shapes and the things that you want to create, you can adjust that with the X and the Z axis. Yeah, so really nice. And then obviously you can still view the and unattach and you can see we've got a bit of an angle there. Okay, so which are really great. I'm gonna finish that. And let's go to the next one. So the next one is my favorite one. Is the new draft. So you can see we've got some chanters on this particular extrude. So in previous versions, what you have to do is you need to go find it. You need to drag up the, the insert. You will do that. You'll add your draft. And then you'll resume it. If it can create it, it will. If it's a new edge, it will fail. You have to edit definition that chamfer and you have to carry on fixing components. So in this particular one, it's easy. There's only a few things. But if you're working with a um, with a more complex part, it really, it really can become a, a little bit of a problem. So all you do now is you say draft, get your surfaces that you want to draft. You select your draft inch and you give it the degree. So, so the green will show you that's geometry that will be changing. Finish that. That's done. Let's take this one here. Yeah? Pick that. Let's say draft. Pick a draft inch, and we add a one one degree on there. So once again, the green ones that will be the ones that that's changing. Yes, yeah, so our grades there. Let's do one more. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to say my draft inch is this bottom. And take my drag handle. So notice that the, the drag handles is a little bit different. It's this yellow one over here. And you can see how that part is changing. So normally eight degrees is more than enough, depending on the material that you're working with. Okay, so that's my favorite new tool. If we go to the next one, which is our uh, the mirror functionality, where we've got a little bit of a preview now. So I'm going to select the extrude over here. That's extrude four. Let's grab it from the model tree. Extrude four and five. So I'm grabbing the the hole and this little cutout on the side. And I'm going to say mirror. And I'm going to pick my mirror plane as normal. And you'll notice it's giving you a nice preview now. In previous versions, you had to finish that before you could do that, show you the actual result. So I like that. If it's if it's not what you want, or it's in the wrong place, or you pick the wrong surface, anything like that, 
it's, you will be able to pick it up. You don't have to regenerate or anything like that. So let's finish that. Yes, and I've got my hole. So one of the other things is if you um, change or you remove um, features that's part of a mirror. So let's say I suppress these chamfers. Okay, so now it should be suppressed on the other side as well. So that mirror one was those holes. So now if it's already, I can just edit definition this mirror and I can say reapply. It's going to tell me what's going to happen. So, so it's either missing or there's references or something like that. Say OK on that. Finish it. And it removed those features from the feature, um, from the mirror feature. So you're not going to end up with missing references or anything like that, even if you mirror your components. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Just the sketch regions. So also a very nice one. So just rem remember here, you have to put your, your selection filter. You have to put that on sketch region. So let's take a look at the right hand side of the screen on the bottom. You have to select that sketch region. So I'm going to pick that and then you'll see it will highlight all these regions that was part of one sketch. So let's quickly edit the definition of these sketches so you can have a quick look. So if you if you try this with an extrude tool, Creo is going to tell you, no, you, have, you need closed sections and things like that. Same with the XFs and things like that. Um, you need to tidy it up. So you're in Sketcher, you can use it as normal, you can bring in files, you can do whatever you need to do. Okay, so we've got one sketch over there and we've got another sketch on the side. So let's quickly use regions and quickly create this component. So I'm going to first go with that one and notice that mini toolbar. So it's giving me a few few options. So this is just one simple left click. The mini toolbar pops up and I can do an extrude, a revolve. Um, I can do a fill or a sketch. Um, I can make it normal or I can zoom to select it. So I want to do an extrude for now. Drag handles, also new. So you can take that drag handle, drag it. And let's give it a dimension. And that's our first one. So the next one, we're going to select multiple regions. So you can go and you can select as many as you need. And use the mini toolbar. Let's do that. Maybe we don't need it that high. I think 25 should do it. Okay. Okay, so let's work with the ones on the side. So let's grab all of those. We're going to do an extrude again. This time I don't want to do it to a selected surface. So I can still or right click to select it. And it's going to give me that result. So now I can pick that one. I can say extrude. You see, that needs to be a hole straight through. I can remove geometry. Then we need a little bit of a cut here as well. Not that deep. We need to bring it in a little bit. It's about five millimeters for a wash or whatever the case might be. And finish there. Okay, so there I've done 
it's kind of part. And I only used two sketches, um, imported sketches or sketches that you've drawn. Um, doesn't matter. Yeah. So the important thing is just remember to to set your selection filter to sketch region. Okay, so the next one um, is a little bit on freestyle. So remember the freestyle stuff um, comes with the, the basic package of, um, of Creo. So we've, we've got a style feature that we've done. So that's the surfacing extension. So we've done one surface with the surfacing extension. And then we've just added this plain flat surface with the freestyle. So we'll be playing around with, with that one a little bit. So I'm going to add a definition, the freestyle. You'll notice the freestyle user interface, still the same. I'm going to pick the one edge. And I'm going to pick, uh, no, that's not what I want. I'm going to say align. So it's pick the edge. Right click and say align. So here's all our align options. So that's going to just do a normal extend basically. That's going to give you some tangency. And that's going to give you some curvature. And this one is going to give you just a planar alignment. So let's do the basic one first. I'm going to pick that one, middle button to finish, and it's extending there. Yeah, so notice that those those surfaces weren't even on the on the same plane. So it will take that edge and it will align it. Yeah, so let's undo. And let's use a different one. Tangent pick. Model button to finish, and there you go. Okay, so you can go through those options um, and do the alignment, or just can zoom in a little bit, highlight this this section over here. So if you right click on that, you can change that. So I can change that to curvature. Normal. And we'll just position. Okay, so that's going to give you different results depending on on the surfaces. So just be ready wherever you wherever you create this the initial surface. Um, if it's going to be higher or lower, um, that's that's going to change how the how the surfaces flow in each other. So um, just plan it a little bit, start in the right places, and then as you align these edges and things, it's going to end up pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to finish that. And let's go to the other one, the freestyle box option. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to edit the definition. And then you'll notice here on the right hand side, there's box mode. So I'm going to activate that and you'll see it's basically changing to your wireframe. So I can still go on, I can pick a surface and I can manipulate that. So I can do Something like that. Let me grab this one over here. Grab that. Uh, let's take this one. Rotate that a little bit. And if I go out of box mode, that's the result. Yeah, so you can do exactly the same in here. You can take that surface and you can drag it. And you can play around with it change the angles. Okay, so 
not always that easy. It, it depends on your parts if you put it back in box mode. You can see where the surface is or where the wireframe is. And you can make those changes a little bit easier. Okay. Especially with, with working with a fairly complex part, this is a very straightforward part. Um, nothing too, too complex. As far as you're working with bigger and more complex parts, and that's going to that's gonna help you a little bit. Okay, let's go on to the drill assembly. So the thing that I want to highlight in this one is the, is the search capability. So in previous versions, what you had to do was the asterisk and then you will type in the word and you have to add the asterisk first and then it will then it will give you that. So that still work, but as you type now, it's filtering through your model tree. And that's going to give me the, all the carburetor parts. Okay, so from there, you can take it one step further and you can say, I just want to, I just want um, my type to be parts. If I pick parts, it's going to filter out all the datum plane, datum access points and things like that that you might have renamed with carburetor or um, any, any other thing. So that's going to do that. If you remove the parts again, and you select just an assembly. It's just going to show you the assembly. Okay, so that's just a nice example. There's a few other things that you that you can. So you can query by state, um, which items was fixed placements, um, failed items, things like that, um, and that's going to show up in your model tree. So so the there's not many carburetor parts, so let's do a, a nice one. Let's do let's do the bolts. So I type in bolt. So look at that. That's not really giving me the things that I need. It's it's showing the interfaces and things like that. This it's still still not easy to work with that. So but if I go and I select, I just want the bolt parts. That's going to make a lot more sense and you can see all your bolts from here you can select them you can hide them you can add them to whatever you need to do okay. so i can say um, show only that or um, show all except or just hide them completely by just using the search tool uh, previous versions, what I would have done is I would have added to a layer. I would have used um, a search query, um, added to the layer, and then just hide the layer. Yeah. So this is just a little bit better. It's a, lot, a little bit easier on the fly. Um, you can still add them to a layer. It, it all depends on what you want to do with the assembly. Okay, so I think that's the that's the highlights. Uh, um, in the Creo, um, Creo um, Parametric 5.0. Um, there was one other thing that I wanted to show, and that is the where to go and find this information. So if you go to help and you go to Creo Parametric help, it's going to open up the, the, the online help files. Um, so the what's new stuff, I think for Creo, Creo 4 and 3, they added it to the help files in previous versions. It wasn't always that easy to go and find it. You had to go and search um, the marketing material, things like that. Um, it's part of the help files now, and it's really great, easy to go and find. So if you're looking for something particular, just go into the what's new stuff in the help files. Um, there's some new stuff in installation. So this is things I, I don't really show now. Um, if you're working with piping, a whole lot of different things in piping. Um, on the data management side, uh, assembly design stuff. So the, the in, in intelligent faster stuff. So there's a few new things 
in there. Um, electrical design stuff, what's new in there. Uh, let's go to the surfacing. So this is the, the surfacing stuff that's new. So what's also nice about these, there's a little, um, it's like three, four minutes, um, I, I think at the most five minutes where there's a short demo on it. It's going to show you um, how to use the tool from there. Obviously, you can contact Boundary and we can, we, we can help you with that. Here's the mini toolbar stuff as well. And what else did I show? Let's go through the part modeling. So there's the here's a here's a video on the on the new volume um, helical sweep tool, and it's also giving you a little bit of a um, explanation, and it's giving you tips as well. So really great. Um, just something that I wanted to mention was the model based um, definition stuff. There's a there's a bunch of things that's new. I think I've done a webinar um, two weeks ago um, that showed most of this functionality. So um, I think that's up on our YouTube page. So you can go and take a look at that. Um, and then uh, sheet metal design, a few things in there as well. Manufacturing, what's new, so 3D printing, um, additive manufacturing. Really, a whole bunch of things um, on the fundamentals. That's more the um, the, the, the the hiding functionality, uh, the mini toolbar, um, new appearances like the drag handles, things like that. Yeah, so take some time, go through these help files, see what new things are there, and we can always help you to use them in on your current designs or in your product development. Okay, so I think that is it from my side. I'm going to put my contact details back up. And then I'll give you about five minutes or so for questions. And then I'll answer them uh, as best as I can. You don't want to answer them now or quit and um, ask questions now. You can just um, drop me an email and I'll reply as soon as I can. Okay, so I'm just going to mute myself for a few uh, minutes or so. Get those questions in if you have any questions.
Okay, so there's no questions. So thanks everybody for joining us. Um, I'll be ending the webinar now. Um, if you have any questions, remember to give me a shout. Thank you. Bye.